The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 9th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. Let those figures do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. But, of course, Stevie prefers the private pings these days with the uh, Discord app out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. It's a little bit of a mixed bag out here. That mix coming from the semis that are up six points. Otherwise, the other indices are trading a bit lower. And I do mean a bit lower. The Dow's off 40 points or a little over one-tenth of a percent. Two-tenths for the S&P, nine points. Two-tenths for the NASDAQ, 125 points. Uh, half a percent for the Russell. That's down 10 points. And since we were together yesterday... Uh, there's been one signal change, and that is in the Russell 2000. We'll take a look at it momentarily. Gold's off five bucks, silver down 28 cents. Slice recruit is off 32 pennies. Natural gas up 12 uh, ticks, and 30 year treasury trading out 137.02. So I mentioned signal change. So first, we've got a consolidating market, with the exception being the Russell 2000. What I mean by that is if you take a look at the upper left hand corner, start off with the ES mini, you can see that little rectangle formation out there. We've got the same thing going on. Inside the NQs, same thing on a Dow. How long does it last? No idea. But if we take a look at the Russell 2000, which never really did establish a consolidation pattern out there, it had an A to B equals CD pattern, generated a bear sash candle yesterday. That confirms a Gartley sell pattern. That suggests that what price should do over time, and that line is the red oscillator and change line, should test each other. So one signal change, got a consolidation out here. What else do we know? Well, if we go to the play-by-play -play menu, that means we'll just simply go look at a short-term set of charts out here. The ones that are on my screen right now are the 30 minutes, so we'll switch over to those. And what we'll see here is we've got two bottom signals, two count them. And that's coming from the ES Mini and the uh, Dow Equity Future Contract. So the beauty there is you have two TD9 count bottom patterns. Now, market should rally from here. They have rallied so far. We'll take a look at resistance levels. Resistance levels for the uh, Dow Equity Future Contract because it's a bullish structured 30-minute profile. In fact, I'll just simply expand out the screen. This way we'll all take a look at the exact same thing. So you can see the TD9 count. For those of you that now, when this topped out here, this was at 7.30 this morning, it was a TD9 count pattern as well. So for those of you not familiar with this pattern, get familiar with it. If you want an easy way to do that, just sign up to Mastering Probability. You can do it for 29 days. It doesn't cost you a darn thing. So here's this cool pattern. It, uh, now, the bars are going to, when you do have a valid uh, pattern, it's going to top or bottom with bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. In the case of the top was the bar following 9. In the case of the bottom was bar number 8. After bar number 9 completes, you know you've got a valid count. You just don't know if there's going to be a higher high or a lower low out there to complete the pattern. But what occurred 
at the uh, just after that pattern formed, right at 12:30, was a bullish structured 30-minute profile form. Now, when price closes above the center of its bullish structured profile, it is presumed that buyers have enough strength to push price to resistance, which is at 32.948. So that's the number to be watching out there. Now, of course, the downside with some kind of flush to the downside, you'd be looking at today's low. The low for the uh, Dow Equity Future contract is 30. To 667. If there were a close below that, then that says we head down to the bottom of the consolidation that you and I looked at on the daily time frame. The chart with regard to the ES mini, not as easy to make a call. It is a slightly, yeah, it's not, it's not a bull. It's just a fair valued profile out here. So you get the TD9 count. Uh, the TD9 count, there had already been a new profile that established out here. As long as price remains above its red oscillator and change line. It says the next battle, which is already taken as at 41.09. If price can close above 41.09, odds favor move to 41.26. If price can take out resistance at 41.26, then we'd see the move to 41.41. You had a TD9 count top that formed here in the ES Mini and a TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute chart as well. We don't have any kind of signals other than a TD9 count top on the NQ's 30-minute chart, but no, not so much with regard to the uh, bottom Um that formed out here. Now, odds favor, there was an A to B equals CD to the downside on the 30-minute chart. That did confirm. Let's go see if we got that. The A to B is all I'm going to do is draw that in. Here's A to B. And then let's just simply go take that line, move it over to our TD9 count top, and see if we got that. Oh, we did. So you do have, so you've got a, 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 a Gartley buy pattern inside of the NQ out here. So it has a new profile that just formed as we came on the air. So this is cool. As long as price remains about 12,593, what we should see is a move up to the top of that profile. And that's at 12,623. So you want to watch that level because if price closes above that, then it suggests a run for this morning size back into the 12, what is that, 12,716 uh, ish type area out there. So we got three bottoms. Do we get a bottom on the uh, Russell 2000? Yeah, not likely. I don't think that that completed the A to B equals CD. But just to make sure, we'll draw on the A to B leg out here. And we'll just simply carry that over to the C to D portion and uh, see if we did Move this back. You know, I take that back. My eyes were wrong. We did get a – so you've got all four 30-minute equity future contracts that have bottom patterns, two with TD9s and two with um, – well, one was with the Gartley buy, the uh, Russell 2000, just simply a buy the D-point pattern. That was confirmed with this uh, bullish engulfing candle at 1030. Then you got reconfirmed down here at uh, 12 noon. Uh, this is a slightly bearish structured profile. So the resistance level for the Russell 2000 is 1886. As long as price remains above its red oscillator and change line, odds favor price trying to target that level. So on the play-by-plays out here, we've got short-term bottom signals. Should at this stage here at 1.30, 13 in the afternoon should push prices higher. Can it take out resistance? That I don't know. And to a certain extent, does it really matter? Not really. I mean, it might matter to you a tick by tick and you're a, a short term intraday uh, trader out there. But in the bigger picture, what we took a look at is price just simply trading within a consolidation pattern. Let's go to our first question. First question coming in from Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector wants to take a look at ticker symbol. F-I-S-V, that is Pfizer out here. So let's do this. We're going to go to a breakout here. You'll see on my charts out here, Hector, I'm not sure your question, but uh, we've got a consolidation on the daily time frame, fairly large one, talking about consolidations. We've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside on the weekly chart. And although it's not shown here, bar number nine did complete for Pfizer. I believe that bar number nine took place on uh, the month of February of 2022. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this 
combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. C C call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Hector writes in and he says, happy Thirsty Thursday back at you. Pfizer, can you please work a possible buy the D point on a weekly A to B equals CD to down uh, pattern? And we will do that for sure. We really like this company, believe that it's ready to run up with the uh, market. So what we have out here, I've got the screen up on the uh, chart. You see, I turned off the price for both the weekly and the uh, monthly time frame. And the reason I wanted to do that is I had drawn in. Um, a consolidation pattern on the uh, daily time frame. And that's by that uh, yellow uh, rectangular box out there. So just as the uh, markets, uh, many of the markets are trading in consolidation patterns, so too is a five, five serve. And it runs from about 92 to 104 or thereabouts. So that's what the daily time frame, Hector, communicates to us. And the reason I turn price off on the weekly and the monthly is because that's the message of its profiles. So let's take a look at the profiles here. If you take a look, we just start with the profiles around the May 2021 time frame on the weekly. So we're looking at the center panel chart. See the next profile forms below the prior profile. So it already tells from profile standpoint, it's in a downtrend. You get the next profile that forms. It is below the prior profile. You get the next one that forms, the next one being in the uh, December 2020, 2021 time period until February. Farms below price tells us about a downtrend. I don't even have to look at price to understand what this message is. doesn't tell us whether we've got a bottom or not. You asked about the A to B equals CD pattern. We will definitely get to that. But now you've got the new profile that wraps around the prior profile, the low below the prior low, the high above the prior high. That is a message of a consolidation. Well, now if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, you have a message of a consolidation as well. So even though you're saying you think this is going to get ready to take off with the market, you're in this big consolidation. So your buy point out here, we don't have to go any further. The buy point on the consolidation is going to be down at the bottom of the consolidation. So we'll go look at the A to B equals CD to the downside on the weekly time frame chart. But I'm telling you right now, your buy 
point in this because until we know if the consolidation breaks is down towards the bottom and i'd say that'd be around 9246 in the daily time frame the bottom of its daily profile and i don't have any signal to suggest that price is going to get down there but that's where i would be looking you've been looking at this now if i take a look at the seasonal chart four five sir this is a courtesy of the folks over at season x out here the red vertical line on this chart tells us where we're at right now what i've done is this tab taken this back 35 years hector and patty and then what i've selected is the midterm election seasonal cycle and when we take a look at that you can see that this too is telling us about a consolidation a consolidation that likely uh, lasts through uh, at least uh, through September ish. So you may not, price may not get down to the bottom of consolidation until then. I don't know whether it will or it won't. But we've got messages of a consolidation coming out of our yin yang out there, whatever a yin yang is. Now, let's get back to your specific question. Let's get back to the weekly time frame chart. Let's turn price back on. Let's turn on the A to B equals CD pattern. And here, your A point out here, Hector, is going to be the high from the week that began, April 26. Your B point, or certainly the one that I would use would be the low from the week that began August 2nd. Your C point was a, about a 0 0.618 retracement. It was really 65%. That was a high from August 16th. Now, one to one was 98.41. And on this trading week, the week that began November 29th, that was a confirmation. That was your first buy the D point. It was a bull sash candle. It was a bullish structured profile. And quite frankly, it looked like price was just simply going to break out because we had two weekly closes above the top of its profile out there. But it did not break out. Why? Well, what it ran into as price ran up there was a D descending trend line so now you know you had one the first by the d point pattern price ran right up into its descending trend line we'll turn off the descending trend line right now then what happens it gets to the descending trend line and moves lower moves lower and gets down to the 1.272 a to b equals cd and what does it do it creates a bullish engulfing candle right here that's the confirmation of a by the d point a gartley buy pattern out here that's the week that began february 21st then what does price do? Well, let's turn the trend line back on. Runs right back up into the trend line. Does it when? Well, it's doing it as we speak right now. It did it um, uh, back here uh, after that uh, bullet engulfing candle on April the 25th. So, Hector, if there's going to be movement to the upside, and only Hector, I'm only talking to Hector out here, what do you think has what price has to bust through to give you a confirmation that maybe there's a chance of upside action out there? Yeah, pretty easy, pretty evident. It is that descending trend line out there. So you've got confirmed A to B equals CD patterns on the weekly chart. You've got two of them, one at the one-to-one -one level, one at the 1.272 area. Again, because of a, a, a consolidating pattern out there in the daily, the message of the weekly profiles, the message of the monthly profiles. Let's come over and take a look at the monthly profiles. Let's turn price back on here. Let's turn those trend lines on there. Price, when it did find a bottom, found, found a bottom at the bottom of a rising trend line. Let's change screen here right now what you will see momentarily is on the monthly time frame you have a uh, TD nine count bottom that took place right here the week or the month of February 2022 so if price closes below that that being 89.91 then that tells you that uh, the consolidation is broken and where price will likely head to first you'd have a measured move but you also have a TD nine count breakout level of 68.45 so you guys might like this stock you might really like it down at the 68.45 level we don't have that message and in fact the only message right now is you're looking for an entry point in here it's between 92.46 94.13 i would say in that range just realize that to the upside this thing is really going to have to prove itself to you but thankfully because of those trend lines out there you and i now exactly understand what buyers and sellers are seeing and doing with regard to pfizer so hope that helps you out thanks so much for taking the time to write in and you and patty have a thirsty thursday as well in fact don't have a thirsty thursday have a wet thursday yeah and i'm going to you know do that with my old uh, h2o out here mm. but tonight that could be a different story we don't have any other questions that have come in i don't think i've got anything inside the tiger's den so that says what do we do next out here you know because we're kind of in a boring marketplace with regard to sideways action Anything in the den? Is there anything that uh, anybody in the den would like me to pull up that we can uh, do a little bit of uh, analysis on? If so, go ahead and type that in. In the meantime, 
What else do we want to look at? Uh, signal it's CBX. Thank you very much. So let's go take a look at Chevron. CBX, I think we're on the white background charts. Let's just leave it there. Let this thing uh, fill in out here and uh, see what we've got with regard to CBX. Now, I know that uh, Exxon Mobil formed a TD9 count top. That doesn't mean that it's going to turn down. And let's go see what uh, uh, Chevron is doing here. It's in the it's in the process of populating. Prices, by the way, prices above the top of its daily, prices above the top of its weekly. And actually, yeah, actually, we're gonna we're gonna swell. Come back to the uh, white background charts in a moment out here, Flip. But what I want to do because we've been talking consolidations out here. Turns out that Chevron was. Oops, what the heck happened? Go on. Let me see if this works. Yeah, okay, perfect. Now, this is the monthly time frame for Chevron, which shows that we have been in a consolidation pattern, in essence, that began in October of 2008. Now, that is a long consolidation. The bottom of the consolidation is down around the uh, 7460 area, and the top of the consolidation was up at around the um, 135 level. And guess what happened in the case of Chevron? Busted through the consolidation in February of 2022. So longer term, what Chevron should do is fulfill that minimum move, which is equal to the consolidation pattern. And Chevron should be headed up to the 212 level. We come back to this up, uh, breakout here. We'll look at those white panel charts and take a look at the current signals, for ticker symbol CBX. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we were taking a look at the Chevron on the uh, black background charts. We looked at that monthly consolidation pattern, long one, right from 2008 uh, through the uh, present time. You got a consolidation breakout, gives you a measure to move up to the 210 levels. We look at the monthly chart out here. We can see that bar number nine is going to form. 
uh, this month. That says that we could see a top form between this month and next month. Remember, the high can form on the bar following bar number nine. So how do we know which one it is, Steve-O? Excellent question. The answer is, let's look at the weekly chart. If the monthly is going to top, we should see a topping pattern on the weekly chart. If the weekly is going to top, we should see a topping pattern on the daily chart. Can it follow the progression? If the daily is going to top, we should start seeing intraday time signals for uh, cash uh, for, for cash for for stocks we use uh, uh, four different intraday time periods because they all are divisible by the 390 minute day you have 295 minute bars you have 330 minute bars you've got uh, what is it five uh, 65 minute bars out there uh, when it comes to uh, 12 30 minute bars and that would be 24 15 minute bars equally time bars that's why we use these different time frames out here well the weekly chart shows us what does not show any kind of topping signal it is still bullish it has triggered a roads momentum indicator signal but triggering that doesn't mean anything jelly bean what it means is that pay attention and pay attention means if you get a bearish reversal candle, then the pattern is confirmed. And then you have to start looking at support levels. Well, the first level of support is going to be the oscillator and change line. In the case of Chevron, you would need to see a close on a weekly basis below 177.17 as 131 in the afternoon on uh, June the uh, 10th out, or 9th out here. We don't have that. So this chart here suggests that price wants to continue to move higher. And it's likely now next month maybe that we would see the top. And that gets us up in that 210-ish type level out there. There is a TD9 count top on the 195-minute chart. But price has held support at the bottom of its profile. So with regard to Chevron, overall right now as we speak, things look good. You don't have a top on the daily time frame. We didn't talk about the top. You did get to wave number F, that's wave number five. You could get a wave number seven top or short-term top out there. But right now, as we speak, for uh, June the 9th, everything looks pretty good with regard to Chevron. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for the uh, request out there. That was for Flip inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Got a request out here to take a look at XBI. So let's go ahead. Not the FBI. Who would want to take a look at those guys out there? Man, have they proven to be a... Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we'll just we'll just skip it. I guess they've always been that way, haven't they? XBI, though, is what we're going to take a look at. We're going to let these charts here populate, and that is the uh, S and P Biotech ETF. And the question is, let me see what the question is. Looks like it broke out of a three-week consolidation. Is now retesting the top of the consolidation today. Where does price go from here? So, with regard to the consolidation pattern that you're referring to, let's get to the black background charts. I can type that in. We can take a look at that. And uh, so, I, I'd say on the daily time frame, I see what you're looking at on the weekly chart, the center chart out here. Kind of hard, uh, you know, but let's take a look at the daily time frame. I believe this is what uh, our dinner is looking at. And it's really the consolidation with inside the daily profile from the center to the top. I'm not really, does that stand out to you also as being the consolidation? I think that's what you're basically talking about. So let's go ahead and draw that rectangle box in. And the reason that we're going to draw that box in just simply from that profile standpoint is because once you get a break of the consolidation, uh, which we've had, then you get a measured move equal to or greater than that. So we're just simply going to go ahead and copy this, paste it, move it to the upside out here. To the upside would then say that price should move up to about the 77.15 area. So I believe that's a consolidation pattern that uh, you're, you're speaking about. If I'm wrong, just go ahead and hit me upside the head with my uh, two by four. Price right though, price right now, I should say, on a daily basis, is back inside that consolidation. So that's not really what you want to see. You'd like to see price, I'd say, close back above 72.20. 20 or so today. If not, um, you know, you're back below the top of that profile. And if you're back below the top of the profile, there's no reason for price not to get back to support. And you now know clearly where support is at. Each time price got down to the center of that bullish structured profile, that's where it found support. So it's very clear for us to know that 6693 is your key level of support inside of uh, ticker symbol XBI. Now let's go take a look at the uh, or let's go take a look at the larger set of charts out here, our multi time frame charts, our white time frame charts. Let's go see what they tell us. Well, on a monthly basis, you had a TD9 count and roads momentum indicator topping pattern out here. This negated a TD9 count bottom. So actually, XBI is saying, man, look out because I may want to head lower out here. Now, it did find support at a breakout level of 64.30. It found support there back in January of 2019, back in March of 2020, and then again last month. 
So here's what you know, and here's what I know. If we see it close below 64.30, what do you think the odds are the price is going to go down in target 44.65? I say the odds are really good. So we do not have a bottoming pattern inside of XBI for the monthly time frame. It says just simply be careful. What kind of pattern do we have on a weekly time frame for XBI? Well, it, I can clearly see an A to B equals CD to the downside. That was confirmed with this hammer candle the week of May 13. So you do have a buy the D point pattern. And price is just, we'll say, trading within the range of the bottom of its profile at 65.32 up to the top of the profile at 75.94. If price could close above the top of its profile, something, as you notice here, so Big Uppy, if you take a look at this uh, weekly chart, when was the last time we saw price close above the top of a profile? Well, the answer there would be is when it was in a bullish run, because price has not been above the top of a profile out here, uh, well, really since the uh, profile that formed in February of 2021. So what you now know, you now know that if price were to close above 75.94, that's something it has not done for quite some time, and that would give you a change in trend signal out there. So that's something also to be watching for on this uh, buy the D point pattern that it has. And the daily time frame for XBI has a nice momentum indicator bottom. So where is price likely headed to if it closes back inside its profile? Excellent question. I would say probably to its oscillator and change line and the center of that profile. Again, that's in the 66.93 to 67.74 ish type range. Now, the price can clear the top of that pro weekly profile now because we know that that's really important. Kind of cool, isn't it? It's it's nice when charts lay themselves out like this. Doesn't always happen, but when it does happen, it just makes it easy peasy with regard to what's the market or what's this stock chart communicating to us. So. If we get a close above 75.94, the daily time frame would suggest to move up to the 94.19 level over time. So does that answer your question with regard to what's going on inside of XBI? We've taken a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame charts. I don't really think we need to uh, spend too much time on the intraday charts out there. I think we have this relatively pegged. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request out there. And would love to get more requests. We'll just check the email line out here and uh, see if we've got anything. And the answer is uh, no, we do not. So let's go figure out what it is we want to take a look at. Let us uh, let me go back here and see what was going on. What do we want to look at? Oh, how about let's go take a look at these sectors with inside the S&P 500. That seems like a logical thing to do. Why is that a logical thing to do, Steve-O? Because I couldn't come up with anything else. And it's helpful. So now we take a look at trend lines. We take a look at consolidating patterns out here. You can see in the S&P 500, the SPY, we took a look at that with regard to the ES Mini descending trend line. Take a look at the XLK. Price just uh, simply trading with inside its profiles out there. And a descending trend line is resistance. Descending trend line, resistance for the healthcare sector, XLV. It's actually also got support with a rising trend line, the XLY. Price finding resistance at the trend. Look at all those nice descending trend lines out there. Think that'll help us if we ever see the market try to break out to the upside? Yeah, the signals here couldn't get any clearer. And yeah, the market's in an overall consolidation market out here. Is there anything breaking out inside these sectors? Just the energy sectors, the way it looks to Stevie. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paper White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got a little bit of a sea of red out here. Now we got all the U.S. indices trading the downside. Dow's off 143. S&P's off 26. That's four and six tenths, respectively. NASDAQ 100 about eight tenths. That's uh, 94 points. Russell's down one, uh, one, one percent. Uh, that's off 18 points. The semi's off a half a percent or 14. Trend is down 60 points. That's 91 uh, points to the downside. You got gold off five bucks. Silver down 32 cents out there. Let's go to our next question. Our next question was to take a look at uh, ticker symbol. Give me a moment here. I don't remember what it is, but it will when I pop it up on my screen out here. Uh, oh, this is the wrong one. Give me a second here. Let's get to the proper proper uh, tab. That is going to be right about here. And that request was a take. Look, oh, yeah. IMPP. So IMPP has been traded for that long. This is a energy company. On a weekly basis, this formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom and TD9 count bottom. So this suggests it's trading right now at 81 cents. This suggests uh, that price should at least go target the bottom of its weekly profile, and that's at a buck 40. That's based upon the bottoming signals on the weekly time frame. The daily time frame says, well, before I do that I've got a short-term top in place and that's going to be that today is going to become bar number nine of a TD nine counts that says the high of today or the high of tomorrow should be the high of that pattern and you should see price pull back to about the 40 cent level out here on IMPP so that might be your entry area uh, into this because you got that nice weekly uh, bottoming pattern out here. You can see on the 195-minute chart out here that price uh, also made a TD9 count top. It did it right at the TD9 count breakdown resistance level of 996 out there. So that suggests a pullback to about 61 pennies out there. So it looks like IMPP is getting ready to pull back. That might be just simply setting up your next buy opportunity. The next request was to um, take a look at FXI. So that is uh, FXI. Uh, we're going to switch uh, panels out here. I'll get those populated on the white charts out there. I believe that is the uh, long position for one of the Chinese markets out here, if I'm not mistaken. It's just that uh, it's hard to find the actual index that that actually uh, trades within. But here, if we look at the daily and the weekly time frame charts, they really tell us, I think, the message, which is what? That message is that prices traded right into resistance, descending trend line resistance. Now, there's positive here, 
is that this is the first week above the top of its weekly profile. Just like that last instrument we looked at, and I, I apologize, I don't remember what it was. Uh, now at the top, it might have been XBI. Here you've gotten a change in trend signal. The only thing getting in the way is this descending trend line out here. But if you get a second, now this is only going to be what looks like the first week above the top of that profile. You get two weeks above there. It's telling us about wanting to change trend and maybe even trading all the way up to 41 uh, 66 out there. But you really have to take a look at the underlying instrument, and I do not know that it's easy to do that because I think it's made up of a – I just don't know. I know I've tried this in the past and haven't been able to do it, but I haven't tried it for a couple of years out there. And, and I'll really tell you what I mean because there's a request coming in for you to take a look at ARKK, one of Kathy Wood's ETFs. So when we do that, I, that is very easy because we can go take a look at not just the ETF, we can go take a look at the underlying instruments to get a feel for what's going on. So right now, here is FXI. And on a monthly basis, uh, what does Stevie have? Not much. The weekly shows us a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. So that is suggesting that it does want to move higher. And that's what we really looked at other than the descending trend lines. Oh, you got a TD9 count top inside of XS, FXI for the daily time frame. That's going to be a completed pattern today. Now, the oscillator and change line had changed colors recently. So price and that line should catch up to each other. I don't know what formation that takes. The line is currently at about 31.91 or 30 yeah 3191 and the uh, price is at 3303 but what you're looking for here is if you can Get price to get down there, test, reject that green offsetter and change sign. That would be your buy point area. And I apologize, I don't recall what the request was uh, because, there's, again, there's just so much stuff that feeds through the uh, main uh, den. It's just hard, kind of hard for me to really keep track in and do a show out there. I mean, I, I can I can multitask. I just can't triple or quadruple multitask, so to speak. But FXI, I'd watch for price and how it reacts at that oscillator and change line uh, for your next piece of uh, signal information. So I do hope that helps you out. I believe there is also a request. I got to go find this one. It was if I had time. Um, what was it? K-Web. So K-Web was, oh, no, it was ARKK. Uh, so let's go do that. That was that was that ARKK was from one of our listeners out here, Michael P. And Michael P. says, uh, where do you see a downside target for ARKK? So uh, let's do this here. So let me change. Uh, let me get those charts up on our screen out here, Michael. And we'll answer his first question specifically by looking at the actual ETF. So we look at the ETF out here. Here's ARK. Oops. Yeah, I've got that on the right thing. Do I? Yeah. So ARKK. You know, other than probably an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern, I'm sure there's one that's out here. Price is just consolidating with inside its weekly profile. And your question is, where do you see a downside target? That's easy. I would have to say it'd be the bottom of its profile. That'd be at 36.86. But really, the oscillator and change line has been holding that support. And currently today, that's printing at about 41.02. So I'd say really, I, I, I guess I would change that to 40.38, between 36.86 and 40.38 40, for ARKK. But before you do that, what you really should be asking yourself, Michael, is the following. What are the instruments that make up ARKK doing? Now, this was taken from probably about two weeks ago. So it has likely shifted a tad as prices shifted. Shifted a tad. What the heck are you talking about, Stebo? Here are the top eight holdings, or here were the top eight holdings a couple weeks ago. We can easily go find out what they are and put them in order out here. But what we're looking for, and Tesla was number one. I don't know that Tesla is, is number one today. Teladoc was number two. Roku was number three. Zoom was number four. Coinbase was number five. EXAS is number six. Square. So you kind of see it. So what you're looking for here, Michael, to really answer the question is you really want to understand what's going on underneath the covers out there. We take a look at Teladoc. It's got a nice uh, road momentum indicator bottom, wave number seven bottom, consolidation with inside his profile. Roku, road momentum indicator bottom, consolidation with inside his profile. Zoom, on the other hand, has zoomed the heck out of its profile. Now, there is no topping pattern inside of uh, Zoom out here, um, and that should suggest that it should head higher. It's wave number seven, road momentum indicator indicator bottom a price should go target 122.89 the oscillator and change line here has changed colors michael so i would say this as opposed to making a taking a long trade in arkk which sounds like you're doing i keep my eyes right now glued on zoom see what it's going to do uh, it's broken through profile levels out here that's a positive if price pulls back and tests and rejects that green oscillator and change line that would be your buy uh, area for that and that might be a better 
by then the overall ETF itself. When we take a look at Coinbase as an example, uh, I don't have a bottoming pattern out here. Maybe there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. I'm not going to take the time to go take a look at that, but it, there might be one. It probably isn't, but there might be one out there. Either way, this is just consolidating with inside its profile as well. Um, EXAS, that looks basically horrible. I don't see a bottom there. Square, I'm not seeing much of a bottom. You're going to, looks like you may get a TD9 count top in U. Those are the first eight uh, uh, instruments inside of ARKK. We can look at the next eight instruments out there. We'll pop those up on the screen here. We're going to go to a break in about 12 seconds. So PATH, P-A-T-H, uh, that, um, that looks pretty good too. Um, so really, I think you got CRISPR. That's going to form a TD9 count top today. We'll complete that pattern tomorrow. DraftKings, that looks pretty good out there. So maybe, Michael, the better bet is to take a look at the instruments with inside Kathy Wood's ETF. Figure out which ones have the best patterns. If that is some reason a ETF or you know that you want to play, but you gotta you gotta admit, Kathy Woods, the the instruments inside her ETFs, a lot of times they don't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Of course, they make a lot of sense to Stevie Peppers. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Let's go to Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Uh, quickly, I know we only have a couple minutes. Um, yeah. I had watched the E-mini. I missed the move this morning. I shorted, I shorted at 4104. 
as you were talking right after one o'clock, it looked like we had a, you know, we had a bottom. Okay. And so I want to know how close to put that stop. I've actually moved my stop down to, to um, uh, 4093. And I, but I don't want to get that taken away. And I, do you, do you see on your charts? I mean, I see that 4081.75 right there is support for the day, low of the day. Well, so oh, are we, the how, signal, so now I'm trying to figure out, you, you went short. So here's what you've got. Here's what you're really looking for. And I've got the 30-minute chart up on my screen out here. And the 30-minute chart formed a TD9 count bottom, and it did that at 1130 this morning. So your real okay. key level that you need to see price close below is going to be the low of that bar, and that's at 4081.75. So that's gotcha. your support level. If that gives way, then price should head lower to where, you know, I'd say the bottom of the profile is a, or not, I'm sorry, the bottom of the consolidation, which is around 4071. So you're not that far away uh, from that level. If this TD9 count pattern holds, um, then, uh, you know, we should see another bounce. That bounce would take you up to the 4108 area. Uh, that's what the 30-minute chart is communicating to us. Because you're really trying to manage this granularly, if I take a look at it, in fact, let me just change screens here real quickly. If I take, and I'm looking at the other intraday time periods, which would be, the next ones would be 15, 10-minute, and 5-minute charts out here. And what I don't have is any kind of uh, signal. The 10-minute the chart, so the 30-minute chart had Rhodesman to Indicator Bottom. The 10 minute chart has a Rhodes, I'm sorry, had a T neck out. This has a Rhodes to indicator bottom. So, what it's telling us is that level, that low of 4081.75, is a real key area for you. Um, okay. What I don't know, I would go check the, the, the five and 10 minute volume as prices push down to these areas. I can't do that because we're going off the air. And oh, if you're that's pulling great. Down I didn't think volume, about that, but it's kind of interesting. There On the eight minute chart, there was an eight. We went to TD count eight just between noon and 115. So that's what okay, I we're jumped on. off the air. My that's, apology. That's, Thanks for calling. Have a terrific talk Tuesday. Tomorrow. And that applies to everybody else. We'll be right. We'll be back. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, folks.